I hate hooping. Most everybody does hate hooping. I wish it could like come. That's the worst part about embroidery is hooping, especially if you're using the big hoops. So sometimes it's a problem. And how to hoop different types of fabrics can be a problem too. So uh, let's see, where shall we start? Let's talk about how I hoop, okay? I hoop di differently than most people. And I'm just gonna use this piece of fabric here and uh, I'll just use it. any piece of stabilizer, doesn't matter. I'll just put it on underneath here. Okay, and I'll just use the five by seven. Sometimes uh, you have problems with gripping that it the fabric slips. Okay, so you want to start out by loosening your hoops. And how you can tell if your hoops, if, if you've got it loose enough, is if you take your fabric and stabilizer in quarters, like this, and sort of note about how thick that is right there. So if you take your hoop and you loosen, loosen the screw and then you hold it out, hold it in one corner, you should see a gap. And like if it's like that, you know you're gonna struggle trying to put that fabric in there, into the hoop. So you just release it so you have about the same gap that you see. And that's a good starting point. So, you cannot hoop in your lap. I can't hoop sitting down. I'm not hooping on the floor because I won't be able to get up. Well, I could. I just don't. It would be embarrassing in public to get up. <laughs> so, it's a pain. It's hard on your back. So, I would put my fabric right over top. And I usually will only, <coughs> excuse me, I will only hoop one piece of stabilizer. Sometimes my design is dense enough and heavy enough and has enough stitches that I really need to have two layers, but I only hoop one. And the reason is, is when you have two layers of stabilizer, it's very difficult to get them both even. And then you end up with this funny kind of ripple underneath one that you can't, between the two layers of stabilizer and you can't get it out. So just hoop one piece of stabilizer. If you need more than one, you're going to float the rest. And by that, I'll show you that in a minute. So anyway... We usually hoop like this, okay? And then, especially if you're using a hoop like this one. It's a monster. It's big. So if you're hooping something this big, we'll just pretend this is big enough to fit in here. And here she comes. Hello, Lily. She knows. I haven't seen her all morning. The minute I turn on this camera, here she is. So anyway, let's just pretend I'm hooping this big thing. And the problem with hooping something really large is by the time you get it up here, you're fighting with the bottom and you're like having to stick your whole body weight on it, your leg and whatever, and you're fighting it. So I don't do that. So I, what I do is I hoop this way. So this is my two hands here. It's opposite for you, so... So, but what happens here is because now I can control, I can control both corners and this is very secure and this hoop is only going to go where I want to go. And it's very easy to hoop. So, getting back to how I hoop. Okay, so let's just say I'm hooping this. Okay, I'm going to put this on top. And even this one, if it's oblong at all, I'm going to turn it the other way because it's just easier to handle. If you look at your hoop, especially on the baby lock and the brother hoops, the top of the hoop is going to, it's hard to see this. I'm going to sharpie and make it darker so you can see it. There's a little triangle right here. Okay. And there is a corresponding triangle at the top of the inside of the hoop. I'll just use the sharpie just so you can see it a little better. Those two always go together. So. Is it a big deal if you do it this way? No, it's not that big of a deal. Unless you're trying to do positioning. And we'll talk about that in a second. So usually what I do is I will. And I don't 
have to use all these fancy sticky things. You can put sticky double stick tape on the bottom of go go on go see daddy. You put uh, double stick tape on the bottom of your hoop and that way it sticks to your fabric. Uh, although I find that is a pain too because it only lasts once. And then you have to put the tape on. And then you have to get the tape off. Then you have to clean off the hoop. Yeah, it, no, I don't like doing that. So if I line it up this way and I put in two corners, two corners are nested inside the bottom of the hoop, okay? Take your thumb, push on the table against the inner ring, and then you take your fingers, you spread them out like this, and you push bottom of the hoop into the top, and then you just walk it down. And that works on the huge hoop. It works up, where's my monster hoop? The monster hoop is inside. It, for the destiny, is huge, huge. <laughs> but when you break it down to turning it sideways, it's not so huge because you can control it. This way, you're gonna get fishing. And, yeah, I know. I have bought probably every hooping gadget known to man and I don't use them <laughs> I'll try them out I buy them they sit in the closet and I can't even tell you where all my hooping things are and most a lot of times after a while when I'm cleaning I just give it away because I'm never going to use it and then I say if you don't like it then bring it back okay so if I have a little bit of rippling in here it's okay to pull on this a little bit so you want to pull it evenly and just gently and straighten everything out so that it's nice and taut. You want it taut, but not tight. Do not stretch your fabric, because what happens if you stretch your fabric, you're gonna get puckering. Because if you stretch it really tight, and it hoops that way, then when you're done and you release it from the hoop, what happens is that this pulls back in, and then you end up with a nice domey piece, because this is now too big for your fabric, you know, your fabric is shrunk around it. So don't do that. Also, if you do not hoop tight enough, you're gonna get puckering because this can happen. See how I can pull that out? That's not hoop tight enough. So, so anyway, when I have this position like this, okay, it's all good, nice and taut. Then I'm going to Go. Good girl. Go away. I'm going to turn the screw. If I turn this more than two revolutions, then what happens is that it is loose here because you've tightened the hoop at this area, and this up here is tight. And in that case, just sort of slide it off the edge of the table, pop out the hoop, straighten it out again, and then repop it back in. And now you've got even tensioning all the way around. And that makes life a lot easier. Okay, so um, positioning. Okay, if you have, oh, other things you can do to make sure your hoops are tighter. There is this one here where I have wrapped the inside edge of my hoop. This helps grip it. What this stuff is, is you know when you get your blood drawn and they wrap that thing around your arm, you know, tighten. And they also have it at CVS. It's, it's a self-sticking bandaging and it's stretchy. So just wrap it. It's stuck to itself. I didn't even glue it and tape it. It's just stuck to it. And now this hoop is, is more grippy than, than just plastic on um, plastic. Uh, where's that one I did the other day? Where are I? Ah, there's one. Another thing I like to do when I got this um, this tip from, what's her name, Sonia Showalter from, it's Sonia Showalter Designs, I think, you can, you can Google it, is that it, if you take that tear away stabilizer, the stick and tear, that sticky with the release paper, you release, you take all the paper off and you hoop it, and then all this paper is stuck to the bottom of the hoop. And I just took an X-Acto knife and cleaned it up. But now this is rough. This is sticky. It, it, it will grip better. That will also help grip your fabrics better. And so I like to hoop with dirty hoops. When they're clean and slick, they will slip out. 
the fabric slips out of them. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about positioning. Okay, so say you want this design in the middle of this fabric. You have a specific spot where it where you want it to, to be. So what you want to use, you can print out your template. And the template is going to print out, it usually prints out your designs. And this one is from the Designers Gallery Studio 3. Um, you can print out a template, but all of the software, whether it be Palette, PE Design, in Brilliance, uh, Designers Gallery Creator, um, Ember, the the Genomi stuff, all of the, all of the software allows you to print out a template. And what's printed on the template is usually your design, and it usually puts a crosshair. Now I've made these crosshairs darker so you can see them, and you think, well, how does that help? So what you do, I need this little thing here. See this orange thing? It's actually an eyelet cutter. I don't do eyelets, but this is great for embroidery. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and punch a hole in each of the five little quadrants. So make five little marks, which is the outer edges of the design. I missed that one. <laughs> here. outer edge right there okay and it makes you can see on the back it made little holes and you can clean this out once in a while because it's going to get clogged as you just take a pin and push it through and then now your eyelet punch is clean and all the little pieces of the, uh, paper out are gone okay so I would position this okay and then I'm going to take I'll take a friction marker or, or a water soluble one and I'm going to mark the little dots. Okay, where did I put this? There we go. So I see, yeah, I can see them. Okay, and now I'll make this darker. going to draw the crosshairs. I don't usually draw them this distinctive, but you know, this is just so you can see this. I usually will do it a lot lighter than this because this is way overkill. Okay, nice and bright. Then I'm going to be using my templates. Now, this is what a template looks like. And they come with all the machines except for the brand new one. The, the Solaris doesn't have the templates. Why? It's because it's got the camera. I disagree with that decision. I like my templates. A lot of people don't. But it, to me, even with the Destiny and the, and the Solaris and the Luminaire and all those, even though you've got a built-in camera and you've got the snowman and whatnot, it still is helpful to have these templates to get you to hoop 99% there. Why that becomes a problem is say you're using the five by seven hoop, okay? When the machine interprets that hoop, it also interprets a square that's around it. So it would, you have this imaginary square around this design and I'll just draw one here. So right at the edges of the embroidery. I'll just do two sides so you can see. Right at the edge. Okay. Now, this design shows what fits in the hoop. Okay. And even with the cam, if it's a very tight fitting design, and you should be using the hoop that is the closest to the, the smallest hoop you can get away with with that design, mostly because the smaller the hoop, the less distortion you get. The bigger the hoop, you're more likely to get more distortion. So therefore, if you're, it's silly to use a, well, for one thing, it wastes stabilizer, which, you know, would make you instantly go to hell. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, if you're doing a 4x4 four four design, look at all that fabric and stabilizer that you've wasted to get this little bitty thing. 
So it's best to have a 4x4 four four hoop if you've got a little design. It's just going to hold it tighter in there. So, but what else? What happens when you rotate it? And say you have one with the camera. This is my 5x7 sewing field. And when you see the template, anything inside the grid is your sewing field. In other words, that's as far as it's going to sew. So what happens if you are rotated? Say you're, you, didn't, you didn't put this in there right, and here's your machine. Well, well, let's do it the other way so you can see it makes more sense. When you put it this way and your sewing machine is sewing, this is your hoop, right? Say this is, where's the other one? This is my hoop right there. What happens is now, see this corner? It's outside the sewing area, so your machine is going to tell you to move to a bigger hoop. You don't really need to. If you had hooped it straight in the first place, then now it fits inside the hoop, and you're good. So that this corner is inside the sewing area because it's always going to draw an imaginary box around your design. Because even if you even if you turn it, oh yeah, this still fits in there, but you know what? That imaginary box doesn't. So this is why I like having the templates because it gets you 99% there. Okay, so another thing too. Okay, see this is my sewing area. I can look immediately and tell you like, that is too daggone close. I would switch to the bigger hoop for this, but we're not going to for now. This design is too big, so instead of going through all the trouble of hooping it, putting it in the machine, and then discovering you've got to rehoop it, which is a source of annoyance. And she knows I'm on camera over here, so she's roaming around my sewing machine looking for a bobbin. Okay. So anyway, how you put these in is that you are going to put them in, this would be the top of my hoop right here, and then you're going to put this in so you can see the letters A, B, C, and it, it will just, just fit in the, these little slots. Now notice something here. A lot of times we will use these little notches as the center of our hoop to sort of eyeball it and get it mostly there. But guess what? That's not the center of my hoop. My center of my hoop is a little bit lower. So notice, see right here on this, this right, see right there? That center is, is lower. It's not an exact, this notch is not an exact center of hoop. But you can count on this being there. Now if your machine didn't come with templates, get some stiff plastic. Okay, get some really stiff plastic and cut it out so that it fits inside the notches of your, of your hoop. And then what you want to do is you want to cut out the little bits. And then you know how on your machine it's going to show you center needle position? You're going to put this hoop into the machine. You're going to go to center needle position. You're going to drop that needle by hand. Don't sew it and with no thread in there. And make a hole in there for your center. Then you're going to go to the, you, you can go to all nine positions on most machines. It'll only give you center needle position, center top, center bottom, center left, center right, and usually it'll give you the diagonals. So what you can do is drop your needle into all these positions. Okay. And or make a, or you want to have a five by seven box. So you can take your frames and make a five inch by seven inch box and then drop these into the positions so that you can get your center needle position and your horizontal and your vertical little notches. And then just take a Sharpie marker and make your own outline with a, with a cross hatching. Then it's gonna, uh, just a cross hair in the middle, and it's gonna make it a lot easier for hooping. So now what I can do is a lot of times people would put that double stick tape. Hang on, let me get this underneath here, okay stabilizer. Okay, I've got this nice and I'll get this bottom part ready to go. And there's the top of my notch. Okay, I'm just going to put this in here. So, get down a little bit. Okay, i got to stand up. I can't do this sitting down. Okay, I have got these lined up. Okay, I can bring this over and while it's lined up, put two corners in. Okay, and it's all lined up. 
push bottom into top and look I can't see the line underneath it's perfectly aligned it's ready to go you're not going to have to do a whole lot of fooling around with it if you have a machine that takes the snowman for positioning I can actually use my snowman and line that up with the crosshairs and now that's ready to go into the machine and for it to line up line it up for you so that's ready to go this helps with perfect positioning say you're doing uh, a, a continuous border like especially if you're doing lettering I'll take my fabric and I'll draw a whole take the whole thing and draw say it's going to be text this long and I know that I'm going to use this center mark as my positioning so I'll do this with the 4x4 hoop and you get the idea so I'm going to take this take that sticker off don't need it I'm going to make this all the way down see I'm doing lettering and it's bigger than the hoop. I know it's bigger than the hoop that I'm using. This way and then over here. Okay. So I can yeah, I get the four by four one out. Yeah, well. I have a bag full of templates here. No. Okay, it's gotta be in the box somewhere. Okay, we'll do that without. I'll use my notches in this case. So this is the top of my hoop. And there are notches. There's the Sharpie. So you can see them. Using the top of my hoop there. There's a little nubby. A nubby here. Being that I see one up here, I am guessing, because I don't have the template, it's got to be in with the machine. So here's the top of my hoop, and there's a notch down below here. Well, there's another notch up here, so I'm guessing that is the center of my hoop. Okay, let's just say that we are going to be using this to do this, to match it up. So, I would do... The first design, all the, usually when I'm doing lettering, I leave extra fabric on either side so that I don't have to do all this calculating and figuring things out. So this would be one hooping, and it would say it would now do like A, B, C. And I usually use this as my center. And so there's A and a B, C, but it doesn't fit the D. Okay, so that the next time I know, okay, I have about that, this much spacing. So I'm just guessing the next spacing would be over here. Okay, so that inside my template is my sewing area. And yes, this is for the 5x7. But this is already embroidered. ABC is already embroidered. So I need to move that hoop down to the next position. I know that I have, in order to get it just right, I am going to hoop according to this line. And this is, and I usually will mark this is where my next letter starts. And it will do the next three letters and say it finishes over here. Let's see. D, E, F. And then I want G here. Okay, well that didn't fit. And I'm guessing it's right about there because okay, the G probably would fit, but the H won't. Okay, so then I would move this down here, hoop along the same line, and now I've got a nice straight set of letters and we're good to go. You can also use the bot a lot of times people will use the bottom part of the letter instead of targeting on the center of the design. Instead of targeting here, they would target here. And they would have that instead of the letter 
being centered on the line. The reason doing centered on the line may be a problem because some of these letters are of different heights. So a lot of times I will center it down here and so instead it will do A here and B here and just target on the bottom of the line instead. And that helps you to get continuous embroidery without having a camera in the old fashioned way. These were nice to use. Now this would be going up and down. This is a continuous border hoop. So this would fit in your machine like this. These, well, we'll talk about that in a second. And you would just simply put this in. Usually I'll fold it up towards the top. Get this underneath. And then I've got little reference lines here so I can put this right at the top. These little, and they have bigger ones. This one is for the 5x7 frame and this one, so, and then it clamps down. Okay, the problem with this is like it doesn't clamp tight enough. And when I'm using this, then I will put little strips of these underneath here. And it, see it releases. And I say I would put these little strips of these underneath. Then you could move it along and then see now this this will grip tighter. Having these rubber things, just little strips of these rubber things will help hold that. So this is nice. It's called a continuous border hoop. And so therefore you would now move this down to the next position. And again, it's also got a template that fits in to it. And that was in that bag. I did see that one. This is the template for this. And again, you're going to read ABC. You see that fits inside. And this helps you to line it up as you go up and down. So you can now line this up to this mark. Get it just right. And then clamp it. They're nice to use. Okay, so getting back to hooping stock. Like Eleanor Burns, throw stuff around. <laughs> okay, let's talk about hooping some different things. Um, hooping for lace work. Lace work is, is uh, this is the no show dissolvable, or this is dissolvable way mesh or whatever it's called. So I like to use this, and this, I, li I love lace work. And this is a, it's a mo one of the most expensive of all the stabilizers. However, when you're done and you cut out a hole, save these pieces and get uh, dissolve away thread and zigzag these together so that out of every two hoopings, I can get a third hooping. So it helps to save this stuff. And this is for lace work. And this is two examples of lace work. This one, is, it's nothing but thread. I have wound a bob in the same color as embroidery thread and I have done this one and and so when you're done this completely dissolves away and you're left with thread not every design can be done on this it has to be specifically digitized for the uh, dissolve away and then here's another example and yes you can just see this I have used white bobbin thread on the back because this is going to be, this was an applique and I used metallic thread on the top. Now when you rinse this stuff out, if you rinse it out with cold water until it just dissolves and you can't see it anymore, because this is made of starch, that starch goes into the fibers and see this is nice and stiff, okay? If you want it soft like this, this is like regular lace that you would purchase, you want to wash it in hot water with a little bit of soap and it becomes nice and soft, just like regular lace. If you want it stiff like an ornament or a bookmark, just rinse it quickly. Okay, now the problem with with lace specifically is that there's a lot. They're usually very dense, and they're and so, okay, that's way too loose. Okay, you want this stuff tight. 
and I'm having to tighten this a lot. Okay, so I'm gonna. Okay, it's you want it tight, but even still, I'm going to get drawing in. And the bigger the, the lace design, the more drawing in can happen. Because even though I've got this tight as it could be, I could even take a screwdriver and tighten this hoop, which I recommend be careful when you're using a screwdriver. And they have screwdrivers specifically for the hoops to make it easier on your hands. Um, then you, it, it's not good a lot of times because what happens is you can actually crack this in a hoop, in inner hoop. And you can't just buy another inner hoop. You have to buy a new one. And, and the, the frame, these frames are expensive. If I have put, these are eraser things. They, they're like this long. You can get them at the dollar store. And you just cut them into pieces the size of your hoop. And now this helps you to grip it a lot easier. So, in fact, I need new ones. These are all kind of brittle. So I'm to need, next time I go to the dollar store, I'll buy some new ones. Because you see I lose them. <laughs> so they fall off. And this helps you to grip without having to, to grip too tightly that you're ending up breaking your hoop. So, again, see, I still get this pulling. It's, you can still pull out with stitching, and there's a lot of pull when you're doing lace. This is a tip I got from John Deere, from John Adorable Ideas, not John Deere the tractor. John Deere is probably one of the best digitizers in the world. And he teaches digitizing and... and He's he, he who taught me to digitize. So this is his tip. And I like this not only for lace work, but anytime I'm using the great big hoops because I seem to get a lot of drawing in because the bigger the design, the more the bigger your thread count is or your stitch count is on your design, the greater drawing you're going to want to get. So what you do is you take your T-pin and you just put it in a side. Don't dig into your hoop. And just put a few of them. Sometimes when I take a, there. You can actually take two of them and do this. So I just run this into the edge of the hoop. And sometimes if you take another pin like this, it'll help draw it out. There it is. Okay. So now what happens is that this T is not in the way of your needle. It's not going to hit your needle. And then it can't draw in. It's, it's holding it tight. So this holds these better. And I'm starting to really use these a lot. And you don't get the drawing. And your fabric doesn't draw in from the hoop. It's stuck by the T-pin. And I'm really liking this technique. And I use it for more than just lace work. And then I put it on the, uh, the long edges. Not so much. Your, your hoops... Your fabric's pretty tight along this edge, although on the huge hoop, I would probably put it here too. You, Like I said, you don't want to dig into your hoop and scratch it. You want to go along that opening and just catch a little bit of that fabric. And now that's nice and secure. And I really, and now your, your embroidery turns out a lot nicer. And I've started doing that on more and more of not just this. I like to use it for t-shirts or anytime I've got a big design. Uh, quilting fabric especially. Hot rodders. Again. So that's ready to, to stitch. Move that out of the way. Move these out of the way. Okay, let's talk about hooping stuff. Okay, <laughs> different stuff. Okay, um hooping for quilting. Quilt sandwich. Say here, yes, we did this the other night. We had stippling, but this is just a sample. Say this is, you put your quilt sandwich together, and these are really good for like quilt as you go techniques, where you just quilted a block and you're going to put it into your embroidery machine to quilt it. Um, quilting by machine is not my favorite, mostly because I like to machine quilt. And I don't like those little knots on the back. So all you have to do for this is one minute, where's the bottom? Loosen this a lot. If it's too thick, you're not going to be able to hoop it. And then just simply hoop your fabric and everything. Most quilt 
sandwiches using cotton batting will be fine. If you have it, it's too thick and it will not easily hoop, if the hoop won't go together easily, don't force it. Then use some other alter, alternative method to stick your quilt down. Um, but, but you don't have, if this really is the only way, the other, only other thing you can do is you can take, not use the inner ring, and it's a, this is not a real secure way to do things, is that you would take sticky tape here, or on the, uh, like, you would take sticky tape on the bottom of your hoop and just hoop this. I don't like doing this at all, and you're just stuck to it, and it just carries. You can get something called a quick snack hoop, which is actually a specialized hoop, and I think you can get them. We have them at the shop. They're real pricey. They are really pricey. But if you're going to do a lot of quilting by machine, they are well worth the money. They're, they're over $300, but they, a lot of people use them who do quilt by embroidery machine. Um, and then that way it sticks together, the, the hoops stick together with a magnet, a very, very powerful magnet. And therefore, you can just plunk it on top and it'll, it'll hold. Um, so, like I said, this is not my favorite way to... I don't like to quilt by machine. I don't like the little knots on the back. And it's right up there with my, I don't like robot quilting because they're too perfect. I don't like them that perfect. I'm, I know, I'm weird. <laughs> but I really, really enjoy quilting. So, oh, now I'll take these pins out. I don't need those anymore. Okay, let's just say I have my t-shirt here, and we all like to do left pocket, so I would mark, and I like using a friction pen, say how you can figure on a t-shirt where to place your design. Okay, you, do, you can buy these little template things. That's the one I never bought, because, you know, I don't do that many t-shirts, but, okay, you're going to take you're, usually the neckline on a t-shirt, it's going, your center is going to be right down from the shoulder line. So if you make, if you just fold it and press it, here's one line. There's one. Okay, let's just say, or just come down straight and then here. wash out. I don't care. <laughs> okay. Or iron out. This, and this. Then you're going to take it and fold it from the top here to the bottom of the arm hole, the armhole. So I'm going to take this and match it right there. Give it a little fold. And right here is the center, approximate center of your of your design. I'm talking like a left chest mon monogram. Okay. So this is approximately where it's going. I want it to position my design right here. Of course, always try it on before you stitch it. Try on the shirt and see where, you know, this is just a guide. Uh, I would, my favorite way is to just try it on and mark the center where I want it to go and just do that right on your shirt. Okay, so I'm going to take some pins and I'm just going to pin through the fabric my crosshairs. Because guess what? When I press this, when I press the stabilizer on the back, these, these crosshairs are going to go away because this is a friction pin. Okay, so I've marked my crosshairs. And let me turn this iron on. And I'm going to eat. What you do is you turn your t shirt inside out, hoop it, and here it is. I can see that. Okay, and then I'm going to take my stabilizer. This is for a t shirt, you're going to want to use a fusible 
stabilizer or a spray. Uh, you can use the 505 spray to stick it on. I'm going to just fold this in quarters. Okay, and then place it right here. And I'm going to press this into place quickly. Not, uh, not steam press and not for a long, about maybe five, four or five seconds, really quick. And now I'm just going to press it into place, sleeves and all, up on the collar. It, it will come off as long as you don't really press it for a long time. And yeah, I know I'm doing this on the table. This table can handle it. It's a This one is a horn table that I've had for a long time. I really like it. Okay, and then I'm done. Turn that off. So don't, okay, so now that's stuck. So what I do is I let, you're going to hoop your t-shirt in its relaxed position. So I'm going to take the, and you want to use the smallest hoop available. So I'll put this underneath. I'm going to reach inside. See how I can see that? If I put the template in, but you know, I know, say it's a small design, I'm not going to put the template in, although I could. And I'll put it in. Helps me to line it up. And help me to get it straight. This out of the way. And oops, here's the bottom of my hoop. I can't quite feel it. So I'm going to scoot it over here. Sort it in the way. Get it over here. All up underneath. Got this nice and straight. So find my two ends. The two corners, push down, push the bottom into the top, and I don't have it loose enough. Wonder. Okay. Okay, it's still lined up. There we go. Oh. Now it's in there good. Okay, now before I start the stitch, I'm going to push these corners down. I want to make sure that, uh, see, I, don't, I can't tighten that anymore. Push the corners down so that it's nice and snug. Okay, it's in there good. Remove my pins. I can still see my crosshair. And now this is ready to go. Then I'll just pull all this behind. If this is in the way, either pin it or roll it up, do whatever you have to do. Sometimes putting those binder clips can help. So just pinning it out of the way. Now put it into your machine, make sure there's nothing there, then embroider it. Now this is a t-shirt, I would put a topper on there because it's a t-shirt. When you're done, you just take this off and then you can remove the stabilizer it just pulls away and there in fact I can use this one again <laughs> or just well and then once you wash it it's all good to go you can't always hoop towels towels are usually too thick and you can't hoop them. So usually what I do with a towel is I will hoop stabilizer only. If you can hoop the towel, fine. If you can't hoop the towel, don't worry about it. Just hoop the stabilizer. Okay, I'm just going to hoop the stabilizer. And get it nice and tight. Okay. Then I would use a spray.
Now, when you use too much spray, what happens is the outer ring of your of your uh, hoop gets really, really dirty, and and then you just simply stick this down. Okay, I'm going to put it this way, and usually, okay, here's the outer edge. See, I was going to do letters, and they're going to go, you know, I want the letters this way, but I'm going to turn them this way so I can get it wider, because this is a 5 by 7 You would find your center. Okay, you decide how where you want it to go. So I want to put it, say, about there. I'm just, you would mark it, but I'm not going to. Press this down, because now it's stuck. Fold this over, press this down. Now your machine, if your machine has the ability to put in a basting stitch, then do so. And you're going to use a, uh, a topping with this. But if your machine doesn't have it, what you want to do is pin. Pin this, especially over here, because what happens is as this hoop moves, see how that can come up? I don't want it to come up. I want See, now that's going to stay nice there. But I don't want it to be pulled around. So you would take take pins outside. <laughs> this is not the go, 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 go on, come here. Come here. I know you're trying to help. You're such a good girl. Okay, go away. Go see Daddy. <laughs> see what I have to deal with? It's not little kid. You know, it's, it's a cat or a dog. Okay, I'm pinning outside of the hoop. I don't want to, and I'm just ho hooping the stable, I'm uh, just pinning the stabilizer to the towel. Just in a few places. put one at the top but I am out there's my hoop right here so now if it pulls I can't feel it and one more quilters pins work great now see I've hooped to the outside so if it pulls it's pulling and putting strain on outs it's not enough pins for this but the strain is outside of the hoop so it's pulling but it's not disturbing what's in the middle. And then now you can you can embroider whatever you like on there. And then when you're done, you release the pins and this just tears away. So that's it's nice to use towels. It's nice to hoop towels. But, but it's great to pin them into place so that you don't end up pulling it out. Because, you know, you got all this big long towel that's going to cause a lot of stress. Same thing with a blanket or a quilt. Uh, whenever you're hooping something big, even if you can hoop it, even if you do hoop it, you know, um, even if it's hooped, this can pull until it pops the uh, the upper ring out. So the would it would still come out. Pin it to the outside. Pin that stabilizer right here. Pin it there. So therefore, this pulling is going to pull against just the pins, the outer part of the hoop, but it's not going to pop the hoop out and pop out your design, which can be a pain in the neck, which can happen and has happened a lot. So uh, let's see, anything else about hooping that I can think of? If you have any questions, feel free to email me at waltzquilt at yahoo.com if you're having a particular problem. So until next time, I'll see you guys later and have a good weekend. Stay safe. <laughs>